Good afternoon. We are ready to start with our practice class. Uh, okay, I noticed that uh, there is only one student from mechanical engineering. Uh, and uh, okay, I don't know if uh, this is uh, for uh, because they, I mean, they change in the, 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 the course, this is an elective course, or if they decided not to follow the practice or to see the registered uh, lesson. Uh, now, it is, if this is the case, please be aware of the fact that it's much better if, if you follow in person, because I'm going to give you some feedback about your work, okay? This is for future reference in case they download the video and then uh, listen to it. Okay, let us start. This is uh, our exercise of today. We're going to, to develop some code to build the direct kinematics of a generic structure, okay? Then uh, uh, I will show you some uh, practical suggestion on how to write, to write your code. Let me start first with the direct kinematics. So today we want to compute the direct kinematics for a generic structure. And uh, what I, I do want is to have it uh, uh, modular, your code modular, and to write MATLAB script of functions is uh, your choice to compute the direct kinematics and its graphical representation. I'm going, I'm going to provide you the file in order to have a very simple graphical representation of the robot configuration because it would take, take too much time to do it. Uh, and here are some uh, hints. In the end of the day or uh, tomorrow, I will give you the code that uh, is a possible implementation, of course, not the only one. Okay. So we want to build the direct kinematics. This is our purpose for next let me say hour. Okay, so direct kinematics. Let me just remind to myself the direct kinematics equations. Okay, direct kinematics. So I'm I'm looking for computation of the end effect or pose as function of the joint variables. Actually, what I do need to compute is uh, this homogeneous transformation matrix as a function of the joint configuration. I already told you that this is available for you, I mean, starting uh, from tomorrow, but this is what I would like to do today. Okay, so now the direct kinematics is something that uh, I know that I can build starting from uh, this function, this matrix, that is the homogeneous transformation matrix connecting two consecutive links. I do need simply, let me say, the denary tartenberg parameters of the links. This is what I need in order to compute the direct kinematics. Okay, so let us start a little bit writing some code. Let me increase the font just a moment. Okay, this should be okay. Let me know if is it too small or what. Okay, so of course I'm not going to use uh, the the I mean the code already developed. We are going to do it uh, uh, from scratch, from zero. Okay. So I start, I start writing my code. Uh, I assume that you all have uh, basic knowledge of MATLAB. Uh, of course, uh, all the students uh, of uh, computer science, they do have it uh, for mechanical engineering. Let me know if this is not the case. But first of all, I need to write, uh, I need the DH table. Now I'm going to write right now uh, the DH table is equal. 
So I define a, a matrix DH, and now I have to build the DH table of something. So for example, let us start uh, with a, a two-link uh, planner robot. Okay, this is a three-link, uh, doesn't matter. Let us start with a two-link, okay? I know that the two-link planner model, um, planner robot has this DH uh, table. So what I do need to do is to define a vector A with the, the length, you know, the column here, AI. Now, two link. Let me just assume that uh, our robot is uh, 0, 0,3 and 0, 0,1. It's uh, centimeters. I want all the vectors are columns by definition. So I put here a then D is uh, 0, 0, or D is 0, 0. Alpha is also 0, 0. And theta, actually, theta is uh, the joint variable. Now, I need to write it uh, quickly, so let me just put a generic configuration, but this could be strongly improved from the uh, from the, uh, I mean, technical aspect of, of writing code. Uh, I would like to, to write it uh, in uh, degrees, but of course, if I write in degrees, I need to convert in, uh, in uh, radians, okay? So now I have the four columns of my DH, in this case, I can write that this is equal. So let us follow the order of the textbook. I mean, it's not mandatory, but it's better. In this case, A, alpha, D, and theta. So A, alpha, D, and theta. OK. Now, those are columns. And I put one close to the other. So it's correct. And actually, I, I can start uh, uh, debugging the code. Uh, only five lines, but let me run every once in a while. So save. Uh, this is uh, the exercise of today, but it's temp exercise one. OK, I will delete it after. And I can run it. So. I have different options to run it. One is just to, to click on the bottom run here. The other is to press F5 on the keyboard. And finally, I can write it here, the name of the function. And here I have a mistake. So let us check together what, it, what is the mistake. It says that uh, dimension of arrays being concatenated are not consistent. So let us check the dimension of the variables. I can move my mouse here, and I have the two by one. Then alpha is two by one. D is two by one. And theta is one by two, okay? So this is a syntax error. And syntax errors uh, are very easy because I mean, the, the program just simply stop. And most of the time, they are also easy to recognize. So theta here is not column because I made the mistake to put this here. And I can, for example, use here the, the, the separator to have it in column, OK? Now, I can run it again. And since this is a, an M file, the visibility of the variables uh, is uh, total. So here, this, this command sees exactly the workspace. This can create or can be uh, the source of uh, <coughs> uh, bugs. So let me clear all the variables in the workspace as first command. And then let me also, I mean, clear the common window from previous command. OK, so in this way, I will always start without variables in the workspace.
Now, this is my DH. I just simply defined a DH, nothing exciting. And uh, the dimension of DH is, is correct. OK. I can put also this and uh, avoid that you write DH on the common window. Now, uh, I need to compute the homogeneous transformation matrix. OK? Let us see how this can be done. First of all, I can write, let me show you what I do need. I do need to implement this one, OK? So I do need to implement uh, the computation of the homogeneous transformation matrix from 0 to, in this case, is 2. We started with 2. So I need to compute uh, the homogeneous transformation matrix of the first one, the homogeneous transformation in the second one, and then multiply them together. Okay. So let me start with the first one. I need to put e equal one, two, n. Okay. Now I haven't defined the variable n. N is the number of uh, joints. I could say n is equal to, but actually this is redundant because the fact that uh, n is 2 is already embedded uh, in this selection of the, the variables. So let me say that you can understand the number of the zero freedom by looking how many rows the dh variable has. Okay? Uh, I should uh, actually fill my code with comments. Actually, I will not do it today in order to be a little bit more fast, but uh, please, uh, fill your code with uh, uh, as many comments as needed. OK. Now, I need the, the homogeneous transformation matrix. So and it should be multiplied by uh, the homogeneous transformation matrix between two consecutive links. Let me just see that I can define a variable of 0. In MATLAB, uh, this command, the line 16, is not needed because uh, you don't have uh, to define, uh, to declare a variable before using it. But uh, I prefer to do it uh, in order to have uh, a more readable and clean code to work with. So this will be my homogeneous transformation matrix. And I say, OK, uh, at the beginning is 0. Now I say, OK. A is equal let us pretend that I have a function that computes my homogeneous transformation matrix at joint I. I will can't to it later because now I cannot run any more this code because here I will get an error because this this function is not existent. And if I t is equal, okay, I can make a I can make a first mistake in writing, for example, something like p by a. Can you tell me why this is a mistake? Where, where are you? Sorry. Can you tell me why it is a mistake if I write t equal t by a and I use it to compute recursively? Because uh, t start from zeros. Okay, uh, yes, zeros. That, that's it. Okay, so if I declare t, rho, t as zeros, clearly this is 0, and I'm not updating t. Maybe it's better to have it as uh, an identity matrix. If, because it, it's uh, the, um, 
the neutral element for the multiplication. If I don't remember how to define an identity matrix, I can simply here um, write it just a moment on the command window and verify that uh, this command is actually building a four-dimensional identity matrix. Okay, so now, is this correct with respect, am I implementing this equation? Or line 20 is correct or they are actually the same? And you try to reply. Okay, let us check. If I implement 20, it means that at the first uh, iteration, I have A multiplied by the identity. And this goes here. So here I have A. Then I have the new A for joint two multiplying the previous A for joint one. If I look at the PDF, I verify that I actually have to, to make the opposite. Okay? So actually 20 is wrong. Okay, so 19 is correct because of the order of the operation. Okay, fine. But I, I, I need to, to build uh, my homogeneous. I have two paths that I can follow in order to build my homogeneous. One is uh, to, to create another file that is a function. And the other is, okay, let us have one single file and put uh, all together. This is my, my choice, okay? Let us uh, exploit the, the function that we made the previous year in order to save a little bit of time. This is uh, the function that has input uh, the DH row of uh, the current uh, DH row of the link we are interested in and as output to the homogeneous transformation matrix from between two consecutive frames or links. Okay, here everything is written. Uh, comments are very useful in order to understand everything. I want the input as a one by four vector and the output is a four by four matrix. Okay, so what is I mean, the, the function is basically, if you look at this one, it is basically the generic expression of the homogeneous transformation matrix between two consecutive links. Let us check from the theory where we are. Here, uh, page 43, okay? This is the generic homogeneous transformation matrix between two consecutive links, where here I have a theta i, that is joint position in case it's rotational, all our exercise will be made with the rotational joints only. So you don't need to write a code that take into account also possible prismatic joints. Okay, this simplify a lot the way your code is written. What is important is theta i, alpha i, ai, di. Those are the four numbers that I need. And in my function, so this is the input, and this is exactly the same expression as you see in page, uh, page uh, 43 of the file on direct kinematics, okay? So let us use this one. 
This means that I need simply to change the name. I'm in the same uh, directory, so I just need to change the name here. Now, what is the input? The input is the I row of the Denit Tartenberg table. Now, this is uppercase. And the syntax says that this is the age. Uh, sorry, I, not one, I, comma, double dot, okay? Now, I'm, I'm done. This is my direct kinematics. Let me save it, come here, and I, I run it. No errors, but no output as well. Why? Well, there are no output because simply I never tell the code to write any kind of output. I like to have some output so I can make uh, something like uh, let me do it here. Too. Okay. Is it nice or not? Well, now I should make some debug. I, I don't have an idea if this is correct or not. Okay, so let me use another, um, another uh, command that I will give it to you, this other. You don't have to, to write it by yourself. That is draw robot. Draw robot is basically a very simple uh, uh, function that uh, I developed in order to, I mean, to be independent from any, any external library that simply draw a, a robot in 3D with intermediate frames. It's just to have a, a graphical feedback of what you have done. What is important is that draw robot wants the dinner tartember table, okay? Only the help is important. So I don't want to see what is inside. I have the age because it is in workspace and I can call draw robot the age. Okay, so this is a very stupid and simple draw of my frames. Now, the, the gray cylinders are just an help to the high in order to understand how those are connected. This is the base frame, one, frame one and frame two. Okay. Let me make another some some debug, for example. So here I can I can decide to have a, a draw robot here that it automatically automatically draw the robot configuration. I want to have the zero configuration for theta. And let me make some debug with the numerical value of the matrix. This is a The output of the robot, it is a planner, so I just rotate a little bit in order to have, okay, X here, Y and Z coming out from the screen. This is frame one, this is frame two. So now I can verify that according to this function, the position X is uh, 40 centimeters, Y is zero, so Y is zero, sorry, and Z is zero. Let me check my homogeneous transformation matrix. 40 centimeters, Y is zero, and uh, Z is zero. And this is uh, the first three by three is the rotation matrix. Now the rotation matrix says that the uh, end effector frame as the same orientation as the base frame. And this is correct, okay? Good, now let us uh, check some uh, another configuration. Whenever you write some code, you always uh, have uh, stress your code by running 
again and again and again in all possible situation in order to verify and the absence of a, a, as long as possible the absence of uh, i don't know any kind of uh, bug okay so in this case i have a 45 degrees and that and after that minus 45 the rotation should, should be as well the uh, identity matrix so the absence of rotation the position on x should be 30 centimeters and something on y 21 22 centimeters 31 21 absence of rotation and so on i mean Now, uh, the way I wrote uh, draw robot, it has it, it ends with an old on command. So the new plots are written uh, over the existing one. So now we can see the two different configuration, the, the last two that I tested. Okay, so let's see this rotation matrix, and this rotation matrix is actually uh, um, uh, square root two over two. So it's a uh, 45 degrees, because sinus and sinus. This is always one. And that's correct. OK, I'm very happy. Everything is fine. And I can check here that this should be always 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and so on. OK? OK, let me check if my code was nice enough to be uh, modular and if I can generalize it to three dimension and for an anthropomorphic robot. My DH now is a little bit different. Okay, so let me come back on my function. I need to change those, okay? But I can have a flag robot equal, now, for example, I can define two link planner. or anthropomorphic, just comment this. If, uh, now, the syntax to check uh, it used to be this one. Now, I guess it's going to, to give me an error. Sorry, I didn't try to indent. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Uh, now, this command, if you see, is a, a very light red line. If I go with the mouse over the red line, it said, uh, look, but there is something that is wrong between the, the variable flag robot and this uh, command okay it says and he's also try to suggest a, 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 a solution he said use uh, strcmp that is a string compare okay i don't understand what s i ask for help on this command it's a compare strings okay so this is the correct way to do it Okay, now it means that uh, I can use the same file and now I will define another structure, anthropomorphic with the tree link. Okay, anthropomorphic robot is this one is a zero and then two different lengths okay let me put zero and then uh, again 40 and 30 centimeters and d is always zero this column is always zero
zero zero zero. Okay. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Now, alpha is uh, uh, pi alpha pi zero zero. Okay. Well, uh, I let me try to run this one. First of all, I close this. Okay, now, is this wrong or not? Well, D, sorry, sorry, there is a D. Ah, yes, D is zero, zero, zero. Uh, I'm sorry, let me come back here. Uh, I would like to stress something. The base frame, this base frame is here, the origin of the base frame. So in this case, let me put the origin of the base frame here by adding the length of this one. It is different from the Dennett Aftenberg convention, so of 50 centimeters. And here, let me change a little bit uh, so to have a, a better visualization of what's going on. Okay, much better. So now, this is my trilink anthropomorphic. Uh, the, the graphic is very, I mean, basic. I only need in order to see where are the frames. And uh, I will uh, show you some better graphical rendering that you uh, will use for, uh, for the project. But now we want to focus on the numbers. So this is... Uh, my my graphical representation and this is my homogeneous transformation matrix position x y and z rotation and okay the first three by three is the rotation matrix okay and you should make some debug in order the last line is always this one by construction okay so now sorry Okay, so now this is uh, the exercise that you are going to, to do today. Before giving to you the task, I would like to spend a few other minutes with another slide of uh, uh, two pages of practical suggestions in the way you are, you are going to write your code and another stuff. Okay, practical suggestion is this one. Okay, so now you are, you are going to write your code. Uh, minimize the use of the shell. In MATLAB, the name is a common window. Try to use as much as possible reproducible scripts, okay? So that you always start in the same situation. For the exercise, it's better if you have uh, one main and then as many functions as needed. Start the main by clearing the, the way I've done. Uh, put all the numbers in the beginning of the, of the main file. Do not have a constant all around your functions, okay? It's better to have it all at the beginning. This is my file. I have all the numbers here at the beginning. And then I don't have any more constant anywhere because otherwise the debug is very difficult. Okay, this is a very short uh, file. Do not replicate code. Always write a function to implement something. For example, here I need to compute twice the homogeneous transformation. I do not write twice this, those line of codes with respect to the specific numbers of the two link planar robot. I better write a function to do it, even if it's only one line function, okay? In that way, if I make a mistake, there is only one place where I have to make the correction. 
Do not use global variables. Use smart names for your variables. For example, position, velocity, and acceleration. Q, the Q, the, the Q, that is uh, joint, joint velocity and joint acceleration. Do not use uh, strange names that you are going to forget just the day after. Indent cycles to have a, a better re readability. Keep the cycle small if you need to do it, and uh, we will need to do it. Save incrementally your work. This is a, especially for the exam project. If you have a lot of simulation, put it uh, somewhere and write a readme file. Save everything. Use comments and plot whatever you are doing. Okay, so all the other uh, suggestions in slide are better for your uh, for, for master's thesis students, so we can skip those for a moment. Those are very simple suggestions. Try to try to follow them, and it will be easier for you to write your codes. Now, let me <coughs> show you a better, let me say, graphical representation of the robot that will be required in order to visualize your work for the exam. So right now, I'm just giving you the name of the software so that you have the time to download it and to install in your uh, computer, OK? So this is Coppelia. I'll show you. software okay so this is the main um, window of, of uh, this software the website is here this is the website copelrobotics.com and up to two years ago the name was uh, vrep you can download uh, without problem uh, an educational version Okay, w without any problem. For us, everything is fine for the educational version. And you have uh, all uh, the version that you, you may need. Okay, I, I already have it, I am not going to download it. Okay, now, why do we like to have this? Well, simply, to visualize our work because graphical uh, because rendering is useful so now i'm going to show you for example okay let me close this one i'm going to show you for example um, one robot that we first upload on our scene this robot is actually uh, an educational robot that uh, we bought last month and that we are going to probably use in order to validate your work okay this is very small we we, we connected with matlab in order that you can use your code without any change to make the simulation and to run it on the robot so basically what I'm going to do is to is to make MATLAB talk with the, the software only to have a graphical rendering on the movement. I asked the robot to move back of 10 centimeters in the uh, X direction while keeping Y and Z constant. And this is simply done uh, by interfacing MATLAB with WRAP. All the work has been already done. So now you only need to install this software. So try to do it, not now, in next days. And if you have a problem, we, we, can, we will have the time to check what's the problem, okay? Because I don't know your operative system. Uh, let me stop presenting. I don't know your operative system. 
and uh, the version of your uh, operating system could be that some of you may experience some issues. I would like to underline, Coppelia is only needed to have a, a, a graphical rendering, and we are going, I mean, we already did it, to build the interface between MATLAB and Coppelia. So you only have to focus at MAP and MATLAB. No need to understand anything of Coppelia, okay? Only, I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm thinking. So this is a, a template where all the interface is done, and here is written, put here any initialization code, this is for you, and put here the controller. And all the remaining part, I oh, know, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, yes, I'm pointing, uh, but uh, <laughs> I, sorry, let me. Okay, so let me repeat it. Here I have uh, a template that I will give to you later on. You just have to write between the symbols, uh, the symbols here, everything is done. And the connection, uh, I mean, the communication between those two softwares is here. So here you need to put your initialization code here, the H table, the gain, and so on. And then without, within the main simulation loop, you, al you only have to write here the controller. So basically, let me repeat it again. Only MATLAB is needed, a little bit more than last year, but nothing, uh, let me say, uh, too uh, uh, complex. And for what Coppelia is concerned, please just start installing it. Not today, but in these days, okay? So that we have plenty of time in case you have a problem. Okay, so now I stop the registration. I ask you to start writing the code and in order to implement the direct kinematics and to, I will say here, and to, I will ask you once a while to share your screen, to show me, I mean, your uh, advancement or if you get stuck somewhere, you show me what, what error is giving you MATLAB. Clear? Okay, so 